So now let's do question number two. So I'm going to tell you something. Whenever you're doing number patterns, the first thing that you always do is to find TN. So let's do the first question. It says the first four terms of a quadratic are 1, 2, uh, 25, and 49. Then, as I said, that the first thing that you find is TN, right? So from the equation, let's take the sequence, sorry. Let's find the first difference. So the first difference is always what? It's always the second term, right? Right? since it's quadratic minus the one in front of it so it's going to be 9 minus 1 right then here it's going to be 25 minus 9 then it's going to be 49 minus 25 and what are you going to get you're going to get 8 16 and 24 so this will be your first difference then now we need to find the second difference. As I said, it's always the one after the first term minus the one in front of it. So it's going to be 16 minus 8. Then here it's going to be 24 minus 8. So what are you going to get? We're going to get 8. You're going to get 8 here and 8 here. So since I said the fact that we start with Tn, Tn is going to be equals to. So from our Tn, we need to find A, B, and C. To complete it so the nice thing is that a is going to be from the first equation so it's going to be basically 2 a is equals to the second difference then the first difference is going to be 3 a plus b is equals to the first term from the second difference then the last one which is going to be a plus b plus c is equals to the first term of the sequence so now we need to solve for a and b so we start from the bottom we start from the bottom we're going to go up so it's going to be 2a is equals to a so when we solve for a a a is going to be equals to 4 so we have our a then we're gonna go up so it's gonna be 3a plus b is equals to 8 so now we're gonna substitute a so it's gonna be 3 multiplied by 4 plus b is gonna be equals to 8 so for b b now is gonna be equals to negative 4 then we're gonna go for c so c it's gonna be for c the equation is a plus b plus c so it's gonna be a plus b plus c is gonna be equals to the first term which is 1 substitute a and b so it's going to be 4 plus open bracket negative 4 plus c is going to be equals to 1 so therefore c is going to be equals to 1 then after finding your a b and c you're going to substitute it back into the equation which is your tn so tn is going to be equals to 4 and squared from here then it's going to be minus 4 n here i forgot the n then the last one is going to be what plus 1. So if you factorize this, what you're going to find, you're going to find that Tn is equals to 2n minus 1 all squared, right? So this will be your Tn. So we basically solved what? This question. So you can name this one as being 2.1.2. So now we're going to go to the first one. They say write down the value of T5. So we know the fact that T5 is equals to take this equation. So you're going to open a bracket you're going to say 2. Wherever you see n, you're going to put that 5. That is going to be minus 1 to the to the power 2. And t5, therefore, is going to be equals to 81. Then you're done with the first question. Now let's do question 3. They say, which term of the sequence will be equals to 10,201? So this one is the tn, and we, we are looking for n, right? So we know the fact that our tn is equals to, take the 1 from the top, 2n minus 1 all squared. Another tip is that if they already gave you the tn and you are a little bit doubtful with yours, take the one that they gave you guys because of that's going to be like just easy marks. Just always take the one that you are given and use it so that you don't get the remaining questions wrong, right? So let's do that. So as I said that this is tn, so you're going to substitute it. So it's going to be 10,201 is going to be equals to 2n minus 1 all squared. Then square root both sides. So this side, the square root is going to be equals to, and this side, the square root and the square is going to cancel each other. So you're going to be left with 2n minus 1. Take the 1 to the other side. So it's going to be 102 is equals to 2n. Divide both sides by 2. So, so this side is going to be equals to 50. 
51 and this is going to be equals to n so therefore your n is going to be equals to 51 so 2.2 says the first 24 terms of an arithmetic see very important so they tell you the fact that the terms are 24 of an arithmetic sequence are they tell you 35 42 49 till 196 right then they say calculate the sum of all natural numbers from 35 to 196 that are not is, uh, divisible by 7. So what do we know? We know the fact that we have a sequence which is, we have a series actually because of its addition. So we have a series which is 35 plus 42 plus 49 plus 196. Right? So they tell us the fact that what is the sum of all natural numbers that are not divisible? So when we check here, if you divide this first term, second term, um, third term till this 196, they all divisible right so what we're gonna do is since in our series everything is divisible we're gonna go and find the opposite of it we're gonna first find the divisible the sum of the divisible then subtract the two to find the not divisible i hope i'm making sense so the first thing is we're gonna find sn right so sn is gonna be equals to you're gonna say n divided by two open bracket a plus l where a is the first term and l is the last term which is we have 35 as being a and 196 as being l and we know the fact that our n is 24 because they said the first 24 terms so let's find the s of 24 and that's going to be equals to 24 divided by 2 open bracket 35 plus 196 and you will get that your sn is going to be what it's going to be 2772 and this is the sn for 4 divisible by for divisible by 7 by 7 so now this is the first part of the question right so now since they said all natural numbers we need to find the second part so that we can find the not divisible so we're gonna need to find a new n so the new n we're gonna take what the last term which is 196 minus what minus 34 Four, right so when we mm -hmm. say 196 minus 34 what we're we gonna get we're gonna get 190 162 right so we're gonna find the s n but now our n is what it's going to be 162 our a and l are going to remain the same so it's going to be s 162 is equals to then here our s n is going to be equals to we're going to get an answer of so now we go into the last part which is i'm going to write it in green so that it doesn't confuse you so now the s not divisible right not divisible so the s n for not divisible so now we're answering the question not divisible by seven right it's going to be equals to what it's going to be equals to this one minus this one so it's going to be minus so therefore it's going to be equals to 15,939. So now let's do question three. So question three says, consider the following geometric geometric series. Very important. They tell you what type of series that you are dealing with. So you know the fact that um, whether you're going to look for a common difference or you're going to look for a common ratio. Geometric series, meaning we're looking for R. So you're looking for a common ratio, right? So they tell you the fact that this is what the series contains of, right? Then now let's go to the first question they say for which value of x will the series converge very important the minute you see something that talks about conversion remember this we're looking for when r is between negative one and positive one right so now from this what we need to look for we need to look for r so since they told us that the sequence like the sequence is geometric we know the fact that we need to look for r we don't need to prove whether the r does exist because they already told us so r is what is always this term the second term minus the divided sorry because it's geometric divided by the one in front of it right so we're gonna say r is gonna be equals to five the five and five are gonna cancel out since in the numerator we have two of what's in the denominator so one of them is gonna cancel out so your final answer is gonna be 3x plus one so that's gonna be your r so they say the fact that is it convergent i said convergent version is this so for 3.1.1 which is this whole thing is for 3.1.1 you're gonna say negative one then you're gonna put your r which is 3x plus one then you're gonna say less than and one then now here what we're gonna do is we're gonna solve for a 
next so first take the one to the take the one and basically distribute one from this side from this side to this side so let's do that one since it's positive when it uh, moves it's going to be negative so you're going to have three x here then it's going to be negative one minus one this side's going to be one minus one so this side's going to be negative two and this side's going to be zero then divide both sides by three so x is going to be negative two divided by three and here it's just going to be zero divided by three which is our final answer is going to be negative going to be negative two divided by by three and zero so this will be your answer so now let's go to question two they say calculate the sum of infinity for the sequence if x is equals to negative one over six so we know that the formula for s infinity right is equals to a divided by one over r so what do we need we need a right which is going to be the first term which is five open bracket 3x plus 1 and we already know what x is they told us it's negative 1 over 6 so let's substitute that so it's going to be 3 open bracket negative 1 over 6 plus 1 therefore making our a equals to what equals to 5 over 2 so now we need to look for r so we know that from the previous one for finding the conversion we already saw what r is so we know the fact that r is equals to 3x plus one substitute your one negative one over six and you're gonna get r as being equals to one over two so now you're gonna take this and this and you're gonna substitute it so s infinity is gonna be equals to five over two divided by one minus one over two so therefore meaning our s infinity is equals to five and you're done with that question so now let's go to the last one they say determine the smallest value of k for which then they give us this which is sigma from k going to from p equals to 1 going to k then they gave us uh, an equation inside or a general term then it says is greater than 30 uh, if k is an integer right mm. so the first thing that you need to do is let's write this whole sigma part here so we know the fact that it's going to be so important things that I need to talk about, right? I'm going to highlight it in pink. This part, it's TN, right? That's the TN. So this part is going to be TN. Since it's TN, sigma is the same as sum of. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the sum of this, right? So we're going to break it down. So we already know the fact that the TN of the sequence is going to be equals to 2 to the power uh, P to the, uh, P minus 4, right? So now now we're gonna find the first term, the second term, and the third term so that we can check whether is it a uh, is it a constant difference or constant ratio. So let's do that. Let's find t1. T1, we're gonna substitute one here at p because it says p starts at one, see, but it ends at k, right? So let's do that. So it's gonna be p1 is gonna be two to the power one minus four, which is gonna be equals to one over eight. Then t2 is gonna be equals to then t3 is gonna be equals to. So we found out. T1, T2, and T3. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the common ratio, which is R in our case is going to be equals to 2, right? So we're going to find SN. So now we know the fact that our R is what is 2 and A is going to be the first term, which is 1 over 8, right? So I told you the fact that this sigma, this symbol is basically sum of, right? So now we need to find what is N. So the formula is going to be, right? So now we know the fact that it's gonna end at k because it starts at p is equals to one but ended k so for n we're gonna substitute k then for a we're gonna substitute one over eight and for r we're gonna substitute two so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna simplify this so this will be your sk right so the nice thing is that this right so this sk is equals to what to the sigma they are exactly the same thing those two are equals to each other since they're equals to each other meaning we can substitute what this one by this to basically solve when it's uh greater than 30 so let's do that
that part so now we know the fact that it's going to be um, let me write it in green so it's going to be 1 over 8 is greater than 30 so now do the simplify this so we're gonna divide both sides by 1 over 8 so when we do that we're gonna get so take the positive uh, the negative 1 to the other side so it's going to be positive do the log rule because if we want uh, k so what's going to happen is going to be log then this one the base is going to be here then the 241 is going to be here since 2 to the power k the k has the greater side when you shift the k to the other side the greater side needs to have the k so it's going to be greater this side is going to be less than and it's going to be greater at k then if you punch this to the calculator what you're going to get you're going to get that it's going to be it's going to be 7 comma 9 1 is less than k therefore k is equals to 8